Hi, and welcome to Vintage Doll Collector. Well, it's almost halfway through June, so I thought I'd better get my act together and show you all the wonderful things I picked up in the month of May. I didn't get as much as usual this month, but I did get some interesting things, so stay tuned. This all bisque uh, Chinese man doll is less than four inches tall. He's got jointed arms and legs. Uh, I found some like him online, but they all had molded hats, and he has no hat, so I guess he's kind of unusual. Um, he does have hair, and a long queue, glued to the back of his head. Along with the all bisque Asian man doll, I got these other three little all bisques. They're just a few inches tall. Love the pink-haired one, and her sister has red hair. The one in the middle has like a sort of like a bun on top of her head. They just have jointed arms. This is a little hard plastic Nancy Ann storybook doll with her original outfit on. She has sleep eyes. I haven't uh, tried to figure out which one she is yet. I wish I had the Nancy Ann book, but I didn't get it when it first came out, and now it's like ridiculously expensive on the secondary market. But if you happen to recognize her and know who she is, please leave me a comment. These are some Native American dolls that I got this month. The lady in the middle is made by Carlson Manufacturing. And I'll show you. She's got her baby on her back. And she's got a um, tag around her ankle, which reads, Deerfoot and Brown Eagle, an Indian family, are designers in the manufacture of this American made Indian doll, Carlson Manufacturing Company, Maple Lake, Minnesota. Unfortunately, she's got something wrong with one eye, so uh, I don't think she's uh, fixable. But kind of interesting to see her tagged. These two little dolls are tagged made by the Cherokees, Koala Reservation, Cherokee, North Carolina. Their clothes are suede, and the little boy has a bow and, and arrows. Over here, this one is a Seminole Indian doll from Florida. These are made of coconut palm fiber, I believe. And the larger ones usually have a patchwork clothing, which is a traditional Seminole style. But the smaller ones, they usually just use the rickrack. But they're very... Uh, colorful. I also got this little pair of doll size moccasins. I think these are also a souvenir from an Indian reservation and you could just put a stamp on the tag and mail them home just like that. This is a Sisset doll by Madame Alexander. She's very pretty. Um, has probably a nicer face than any of the other sets I have. I think I have two others. Her outfit, I had no idea. I knew it wasn't a Sisset outfit, um, but it's obviously factory made. Um, so I asked around. I asked on Facebook and did a little research, and it looks like it might have been made for a little Miss Nancy Ann. It's not tagged, uh, but it has a donut-type snap. It's two pieces. It's not a one-piece dress. It's a top and a skirt. And probably the, the top is supposed to go around the other way. She's got it on backwards. Uh, but I like it this way better. And it's just a pretty little outfit. And I think she's probably going to stay in it for the time being since I don't have a Little Miss Nancy in. I wish I had some shoes. I, none of my sets have any shoes. They're hard to find because their feet are a little smaller than the other similar size dolls. But she's a very pretty one. If you like handmade folk art dolls, these two are very interesting. The old man and old woman, um, they're jointed just at the arms. She carries a little pail. You see their faces are very crudely carved and he is carved so that he's bent over let me turn him around so you can see he's bent over and, and balances on his cane 
but he has a very crudely carved face too and his his beard is uh, cotton batting they're not marked or anything they're kind of cool these dolls are pretty rare this these two are from the um, Children of All Nations United series, which was uh, put out by UNITA. I think it was 1963 or 64, thereabouts. Uh, you might be familiar with their Miss Suzette doll, who was a, a Barbie clone. Well, Miss Suzette had painted eyes, but they made a sleep-eyed version. These dolls have sleep eyes, and the sleep-eyed version was called Miss Debutante. Miss Debutante is quite rare. Um, I guess Miss Debutante wasn't successful, which is probably why she's so rare. So they used up um, the remaining Sleep Eye dolls making these uh, Children of All Nations United dolls. And the one on the left is Miss Orient. She wears a Japanese kimono. And the one on the right is Miss Italy. They have very pretty faces. But their hair, like a lot of Unita dolls, is not great quality and very sparsely rooted. They're actually only rooted around um, like the hairline and the top of the head is bald underneath. And Miss Orient, I don't know if you can see, but her mouth is painted a little bit off center. I have not yet decided whether I'm gonna try and fix that or leave it as is. But. I had a Miss Debutante many years ago when I first started collecting back in the 90s and I sold it and I've been kicking myself ever since because I at the time I didn't know that much about dolls and I was assumed I'd find another one and I never have. So when I saw these I just snapped them right up. Pretty cool, huh? These are Gura dolls. I'm not sure if that's the right pronunciation but they're made in Germany. They're celluloid and um, they have sleep eyes. The boy is dressed in the costume of Bavaria. He's got his uh, suede lederhosen on. And the girl I believe is dressed in the costume of Ulm, which is a city in Germany on the Danube River. And they're not valuable dolls particularly. They're fairly common tourist type souvenirs. But they have very nice faces. Very pretty dolls. They're nice. I learned a little bit on this doll. I, I looked him up. I was pretty sure he was a Sami doll. Um, but the Sami people are um, the indigenous people from the northern Scandinavian countries and part of Russia. They're the traditional reindeer herding people. And he's wearing his traditional costume. And he's even got the tag on his back from the store in Finland where he was purchased. I looked up the name of the store. Stockman is uh, in Helsinki, fin Finland, is the biggest department store in the Nordic countries. And the hat is very interesting. Do you see his hat, how it's like four-cornered? On the top, this is called a Four Winds hat and is part of the Sami man's traditional attire. Got this black haired ponytail Barbie. Um, you can probably see her legs are wicked bent out of shape. I'm going to try and straighten them out. I think if I put her in boiling water and try to straighten them, that might work. She came with her vinyl case. No Barbie clothes, unfortunately, although there were some other doll clothes in there, which I'll show you. Um, she's a greasy face doll. I'm going to see if I can get some of the shine off without wrecking the face paint. She's got a little tiny chew on her nose, too, but she was the price was very reasonable, so I'm not going to complain. Along with the Barbie, I got some clothes. Um got this dress which is a Barbie clone thing it's factory made um, it may be a premiere outfit not sure it's pretty grubby also this um, pretty pink evening gown it has the same kind of 
snaps on it as the other dress. The top is satin with a rose. And also, this two-piece bathing suit has the same kind of factory snap. So um, keeping my eyes open to see if I can find out who they belong to. Nobody on the Clone Dolls Facebook group knew for sure, but I like them anyway. This is uh, this is what the Barbie doll was wearing. This is actually a uh, Vogue Jill dress. Tagged. Got a couple of um, hand-knitted sweaters. These look like they might be better for Ken than Barbie, but I don't know. There's a brown one and the red and white one. And these, these are for Little Miss Revlon. Tagged Ideal. This is a swimsuit. It's called Cooley Beach. Um, but this is a, a variation that's hard to find. Um, the red print. And this, um, this is the blue variation, which is apparently really rare. Um, nobody's ever seen this blue one before. Uh, I've got the bathing suit and the uh, jacket cover-up. And also a hat, which there's disagreement as to whether that's original or not. But the uh, the swimsuit is tagged ideal. Got a stain on the back. I don't know if that was from tape or what that was from. But anyway, it won't show once it's on a doll. Now all I need is a Little Miss Revlon to put it on. Got some Dawn and Friends dolls. Here's Dawn. Angie. Glory. And this one is a head to toe Angie. She's a hard to find one. I don't think I've ever had her before. And this is a rock flower doll, Lilac. I've actually got two or three other Lilacs, but this one has a prettier face than either of the other ones I have, so I think I'll clean her up and keep her. And got some Dawn clothes. They're all pretty played with. Is that, what is that? Uh, Cupid's bow, is that what that's called? I forget. One boot that goes with it. Raincoat. Uh, that's, is that one of the uh, modeling agency dresses? I forget now. And some Dawn size clone outfits. I'll have to look those up, see who they go to. This is a rock flower thing. So that was kind of a cool little lot. Last but not least, I got a couple of Sasha books at my doll club meeting. Uh, this one is head to toe patterns. The patterns are just for the girl Sashas, but pretty good. I do have a Sasha doll, so one of these days I may get uh, down to business and make her something to wear. Also this one, Sasha dolls through the years. A nice little book, a little bit of the history of the Sasha dolls. Thanks for joining me today. Please like and share to help spread the word and click on the subscribe button or the logo in the lower right corner for more vintage doll collective videos. See you next time.